and take a look in fact uh, at that uh, later but uh, moving on Hadiya Rakhila Ashokan has left for New Delhi to appear before the Supreme Court in the Kerala Love Jihad case. She has made it clear that no one forced her to convert to Islam and that she wants to be with her husband. Here's a report. I am Muslim. No one forced me to convert. I want to go with my husband. Meet Hadiya, a 24-year-old woman who converted to Islam when she married Shafeen Jahan in 2014. Hadiya's father Ashokan didn't give his blessings to the marriage rather he moved Kerala High Court alleging that his daughter was forcibly converted to Islam and that she would soon be recruited by ISIS but Hadiya denies such allegations fighting off the pressure from her own father fighting to reunite with her husband she'll be in the Supreme Court of India this Monday remember Kerala High Court had annulled Hadiya's marriage and gave her custody to her father The Supreme Court had held that a woman's consent as an adult is the most important aspect to consider in this case. Last month, a 17-second video surfaced in which Hadiya was seen talking about alleged torture and said she would be killed soon because her father was very angry. It was then the Supreme Court had questioned the role of Hadiya's father in his adult daughter's life. The top court in fact had also questioned how the Kerala High Court annulled the marriage of Hadiya and Shafeen Jahan. After orders from the Apex Court, the case was registered by the National Investigation Agency. However, the National Investigation Agency mentions that Hadiya's case was not a unique one and Kerala was witnessing a trend of people joining ISIS. Meanwhile, Hadiya's husband Shafeen Jahan has now alleged Hadiya is being forced to reconvert to Hinduism. Love or jihad, the Supreme Court of India will soon decide. as hadia will be at its doorstep for the first time this monday bureau report vion and joining me from new delhi to discuss more on this is a lawyer from supreme court shri ram parakad good evening shri ram um precisely hadia will be in the apex court tomorrow a lot of anticipation about that but uh, do you think she will get what she wants or perhaps uh, there is something else in store for her Now one of those things which is very important tomorrow is that uh, I I hear from news reports that you know her mind as to whether she she wishes to practice Islam whether she wishes to continue with the marriage which has been annulled by the Kerala High Court uh, she has given certain opinions is what I get to hear but then she needs to give it in public court uh, and that is very important the hearing tomorrow is extremely important because what justice Deepak Mishra and the Supreme Court has uh, stated and held that her consent her opinions her decisional autonomy which has been held by a nine judge bench of the supreme court uh, which is of great relevance in deciding this case this decisional autonomy has to be emphasized by her before an open court so therefore this would happen tomorrow and that's why the hearing tomorrow is of extreme relevance not only for this case but in general for ideas like privacy liberty etc which has been in contest in this particular case Also Shri Ram uh, interestingly because I was there inside Supreme Court we've seen a different stance from this uh, particular bench in the Apex Court rather from the earlier one which was headed by Chief Justice former Chief Justice of India Justice K R who had ordered a national investigation uh, agency probe into this matter and then came in uh, Justice Deepak Mishra who said that a woman can decide for herself she is old enough she can decide who she wants to marry a woman's autonomy is important as you pointed out as well so What do we expect from the bench tomorrow? Of course, one cannot preempt and uh, re pre-evaluate on what is going to happen, but this change in stance has really made some startling uh, differences in the case. In fact, uh, if I have to clarify about why was a national investigative agency appointed, was that there were certain allegations which suggested, uh, at least they made a suggestion that the case is much beyond Hardia. uh because the case started as a habeas corpus petition which is only about the consent of hadia to be with her husband or uh to continue with her marriage and go with her uh i mean to to go with her father so this is not the ambit of the case as a larger conspiracy is what certain people had alleged before the court in order to get a, a closing chapter in so far as such conspiracy theories are concerned that was the context in which a national investigative agency was appointed but then nevertheless uh, after that uh, chapter was over it was uh, more about the consent of this individual it was more about her choices her autonomy in deciding these choices the twofold choices 
process of practicing the religion she wants to practice and to live with the person she wants to live. This particular bench of the Supreme Court is interested only in deciding in this particular question. Uh, that question brings into light two questions of law. The one which is whether a court of law under a habeas corpus petition can annual a marriage. And secondly, whether an NIA has to be appointed by a court of law in a habeas corpus petition. Both these questions of law and two questions of fact as to whom does she want to live with and what religion does she want to practice. These four questions I think will be so critical tomorrow and I very optimistically believe that these questions will be uh, finalized tomorrow through her voice, through her sentences and through her opinions on her life. Uh, to her more, most critical uh, sentences which are being uttered in court tomorrow, I think there will be a finality to this whole saga which is turned more political than legal. Uh, I would say that is for the most unfortunate reasons. Right, Sri Ram, and uh, do throw some light on that uh, Kerala High Court judgment which had in fact annulled uh, Hadiya's marriage to Shafin Jahan for us. Uh, to, to, to throw light on that, I would first require to tell you that in my opinion, that's a very regressive judgment. Uh, firstly, apart from being regressive, it was the third habeas corpus filed by the girl's father, Ashokan. First two petitions were dismissed saying that there is not even an iota of evidence saying that Hadia did not want to stay with the husband. So a habeas corpus petition is maintainable only if she is confined against her will. So these two petitions are dismissed. The third petition takes a totally different view. The view taken in the third petition is that even though she's a major, even though she's 24 years old, her decisional autonomy is not in entirety hers. She cannot decide as to where she has to live. She cannot decide as to what marriage she has to take. She cannot decide as to what religion she has to practice because she has been hypnotized or he's, she's been uh, brainwashed, etc., which are the opinions which the High Court has taken. I would very well take these opinions on face value if it was taken in common parlance, but the High Court of the land taking such a judicial opinion was the most unfortunate thing to happen in this whole case. I think that is, what, that is what triggered this controversy to the extent to which it has been triggered to. I would like to say that the High Court judgment deserves to be set aside and this whole episode of this uh, issue turning out to be much more than a habeas corpus petition is most unfortunate. Right, Sriram, as you pointed out, in fact, this High Court judgment uh, does appear to be regressive in nature. But Hadia has time and again said she feels threatened she did not convert uh, to Islam uh, forcefully. She did it out of uh, voluntariness. This was what she wanted. She wanted to be with her husband. How difficult is it? Uh, or do you think this is uh, you know, overreach of judicial, judicial intervention when it comes to uh, cases which are personal for a woman who's 24-year-old? Does the judiciary actually think that a 24-year-old woman cannot decide for herself what she wants, who she wants to marry? So that's why I said this hearing is of great importance. It being in, in public view, there, there were a few views that, you know, it has to be secret, it has to be in camera. So those things need not be taken into importance because the idea of privacy here is not to have a secret hearing, but to, to have the idea of decisional autonomy in, in, in its complete sense. Therefore, the views of, of the lady being told in open court is of great relevance here. So once you hear it, then, then all these questions will be uh, attaining its finality, which it deserves. All right, Sriram, uh, all the you and me both will be inside uh, the court on Monday when we see Hadia before the Apex Court bench. Uh, we'll meet then. But thank you for joining us in the program and giving us those details.